Hi, this is Mimeophone from Make Noise. A brief look at the controls may make it seem like a simple stereo delay with a filter and reverb. But under the hood, there are a few unique features that make it a uniquely sounding and highly playable mini synth, as you're hearing now. And a zones feature, which makes it into a multi layer looper and texture builder with creative possibilities unlike I've ever seen. Before we get to the good stuff of zones, layering, time travel, and using Mimeophone as a synth, we need to get through the basics. If you're eager to skip ahead, you can always use the timeline on the left. Let's start with the basics. Mimeophone is a stereo module. It can take in either a single mono input, which will be automatically normaled to the right side, or a stereo pair, and it outputs a stereo pair as well. Now, I'll explain everything in detail in this video, but in terms of a general control overview, Mimeophone has six main control knobs. A dry, wet mix will let you hear either your source audio, a mix of whatever this thing does, and just the wet signal. Repeat is like feedback and other delays. Starts out with one repeat and then as you turn it clockwise, the number of repeats increases. And really this is a level of the audio feeding back into the delay line. And if you get it past, say around this spot, then it starts to self oscillate and intensifies, but it doesn't go totally crazy so you can play with rates as it's self-oscillating without things getting out of hand. Zone and rate control the delay times. Now, zones pull off a trick that I'll talk about later on, but for the sake of the introduction, you can look at zones as sort of like a coarse rate control. Right, for really long delays, up until 42 seconds in the last zone, zone seven, and down in zone zero, it gets to milliseconds rates of delays. Right, so this is sort of like the coarse tuning for the delay time, and then rate is the fine tuning. Now, Zones has much more interesting functionality as we'll get to later on, and Rate also controls Skew. We'll get to that later on too, but let's just continue with the basic overview. Halo and Color functions sort of like Reverb and a Filter. Let's take a listen to them on a few sounds. So let's take a simple snare, All right? So as I increase Halo, this happens. Okay, let's try some other sounds. this more gentle piano. Guitar sound. And then color is kind of like a filter. This is sort of the spot where it doesn't do anything. And then it gets darker as we turn it in this direction and brighter beyond three o'clock. Right, let's hear it on this. Color is applied progressively to the feedback loop. So let's play this snare, All right? If I turn down the filter, the repeats will get darker over time or brighter over time, right, brighter and thinner. And halo is an effect that's applied, but doesn't get into the feedback loop. Right, so I can say, turn on a lot of repeats and turn halo down or up. 
it won't impact the feedback buffer. Each of the parameters has voltage control inputs and zone rate and color have dedicated attenuverters. So for example, if you wanted to modulate rate for a chorus-like effect, you could do that with voltage instead of with your hand. Mimeophone also has three control buttons, flip, hold, and skew. Flip reverses the buffer. Right. Hold holds it in a loop. Right. You can play around with it and apply effects to it in a non-destructive way. Right. So here, color doesn't impact the feedback loop, unlike what it does when hold is off. More on hold and skew later on. Now, Mimeophone actually has two delay lines. Skew lets you shift the rates apart. So let's turn on skew. And then right, if you have headphones on, which you really should for a video like this, you'll hear the different polyrhythmic rates in each ear. Just to complete the overview, you've got two voltage control inputs for rate. One is to control the entire movement of the rate in a particular zone, and micro rate is used for finer tune changes as well as to play Mimeophone as a synth in zone zero. More on that, of course, later as well. Mimeophone also has a clock input to sync its delay rate to an external clock, as well as a clock output if you set the delay rate here and want to sync other devices to it. When skew is on, the two delay lines have different rates and that's reflected in clock two. So this little LED blinks according to the rate. Notice now it's blinking in kind of an erratic rate because it's combining both clocks for both delays. If I turn skew off, then it'll have just a single rate for both delays and that will be reflected both in the LED as well as the output. So let's dive a little bit deeper into skew and to clock rate syncs. Now I already showed you before how hitting skew and turning the rate knob right, will cause the two delay lines to operate at different rates. This, by the way, is different from ping pong, which we'll talk about in a bit. But if I have a beat going, right, it can get messy with or without skew, right, especially with skew. Matching the rate can be a bit of a chore, which is, of course, why we have clock sync. While we're on the topic of clock, when you don't have clock plugged in, shifting the rate will cause these Doppler style pitch shift effects, which you may or may not want. So let's get the beat going and plug this in to get it in sync. With clock, delay rates will snap to musical intervals. Let's turn on skew. Skew makes it a bit harder to find order, but if chaos is your thing, you're gonna feel right at home here. Once you've established the offset between the two delay lines, hitting the skew button again will change the function of the rate knob back to controlling both delay lines, which will now move them together, but maintain their relative skew. And changing zones is a good way to quickly divide or multiply the delay time. When we'll look at using Mimeophone as a synth, skew lets you use the two delay lines as interval pitched oscillators, more on that later. Now obviously both zone and rate and everything else can be modulated, but this gets particularly interesting when either sequenced or fed random values. One last thing about clock, you can tap tempo triggers into it. So for example, I could use this signal here connected into the clock to set the rate with just two taps. The next stereo feature of Mimeophone is its ping pong mode. A long press on the skew button turns on ping pong mode and you know you're in it when the zone LED is blinking. And now if I send audio through one of the inputs, right, it'll bounce around. Finally for ping pong, if I turn it off, ping pong and skew do work together. So I could enable skew. and then add ping pong as an additional layer on top of that. Let's talk about flip and hold a little bit more in depth before we talk about zones. 
I'll use this microphone to demonstrate flip. One, 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 two, one, two, three, four, three, four. One, no. Yes. Six. One, two, no. three, Here. four. Oh. So that's me from the Twin Peaks Red Room. Flip is also an interesting effect in the lower zones. More on that when we use Mimeophone as a synth. The hold button stops repeats from changing, so whatever is in the zone's buffer is frozen there, and future repeats won't overwrite it or any of the other zones. So let's, for example, record audio into, let's say, this zone. One, 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 two, one, three, two, four, three, five. four, five. When hold is active, you use the repeat knob to navigate across the audio you recorded in the zone you're in. And rate determines the window size, the loop size that you're looking at within the zone. And very small rate numbers, Mimeophone starts to feel like a granular synth. And if you modulate the repeat point, you might be able to get away with time stretch like behavior. All right, so let's talk about zones and some of their creative potential. At their most basic, you can look at zones as just different delay ranges, where zones 0 and 1 are so short they can be used for chorus, flanger, and phasing effects like we saw before. Zones 2 and above can be used for delay or echo style effects, and then zones 5 through 7 are long enough to be used as a looper. However, if you really understand how zones work, they can be quite a bit more than just a course setting for delay time. All the zones actually live in a single buffer that's about 42 seconds long. Actually, there are two of these buffers, one for stereo left and another for stereo right, but to simplify things, let's just talk about one big buffer. Now, if we use a tape analogy, imagine a recording head and a playback head traveling across this buffer or tape. The recording head takes whatever audio is played by the playhip head, right? That's the past, that's the delay time, mixes it with the audio coming in from the inputs, applies the filter and repeat attenuation or amplification to it, and prints that to where the record head is at. You'll hear the audio that was just recorded whenever the playhead catches up. Now, the distance between the record head and the playhead that's traveling behind it is actually the delay time, right? If it's really long, you get a blooper. If it's really short, you get chorus or flanger style effects. And if it's somewhere in between, you get echoes. Let's take a look at an example. So at zone three, which is this light at orange, right? It starts out at sort of turquoise, green, uh, peach, and orange. That's zone three. At its maximum length, it's only a bit over half a second. So if I record a number into it, you'll just hear that number repeat within the zone. So if I set repeats to one repeat and put the mix somewhere in the middle, rate at maximum, one, one, one two, two, three, three, three four, four, five, five. five. Our half second loop is about enough for one number. Five, five, five. But if we zoom five, out to five, a zone that's larger than this three, one, four, it's like five, going back in time. Three, four, five. And the next zone goes even further. One, two, three, four, five. So if we go back to the record and play head analogy in zone three, we had a short buffer that was traveling across a longer buffer. I said one here and it was repeated. I said two here and it was repeated, then three, then four, and then five. And then as I expanded the zones from zone three to four to five and so on, I heard more of the history. So for example, the audio you're hearing now is a simple playback of the entire 42 second buffer in zone seven. but it was built layer upon layer with various feedback noodles using an O-Coast, messing around in zone zero, then gradually expanding to zone one, two, and so on, zooming further and further out. With smaller zones progressively writing into the bigger zones. Now, gradually moving back and forth in zones like this, in my opinion, is one of the most innovative and interesting things about Mimeophone. 
I'll give you another example of the power of Mimeophone's zone layer at the end of the Mimeophone as a synth section of this video, which is coming up now. So one of the most unique aspects, in my opinion, of Mimeophone is how it plays and sounds as a synth. This is sometimes called string synthesis or carpless strong. And the idea is to use a very short feedback loop that latches on to a short snippet of audio, even noise, which basically turns the delay line into an oscillator, and then to place a filter in the feedback loop to shape the sound. So I'll be using a bunch of sounds here, but let's just start with this. Short little click. Now I need to make sure I'm in zone zero for this to work. Turn color down, turn the mix up. All right, turn repeats up. And I get a string like sound that is originated by a little brief snippet of noise. Now, a lot of delays will let you pull this carpless strong style trick off, but not many of them will let you play it consistently with a vault per octave source. Now I'll take the pitch out of key step and plug that into the micro rate input. And I can now start to play this. Now this string synthesis method excited by noise is nice and all, but I actually prefer Mimeophone's sound on its own when it feedbacks onto itself. So if you turn up repeats, right, it'll pick up, I guess, to whatever little noise is in the system. Right, and make this sort of like electric guitar-like sound. which you can play with vault per octave control. Transpose this with the rate knob. Right? This is a pretty wild sounding synth. Now, this can get even more interesting if I turn up skew, right? So now I get two sounds, two notes. I control the interval between them here. And once I set the interval, I can move them together or transpose them together. Right? When skew is off, so. <laughs> It's pretty cool, I think. And you can play this as well, right? Now hold it. Is everything we played just gone? Well, not quite. Remember what I said. Everything you play in the small zones is laid out or recorded in the bigger zones. So let's zoom out and see what happens. All right, let's see. Check this out. Maybe here. Maybe I waited too long. Okay. All right, so remember you can move around the zone using repeat control. All right. Increase the size of the zoom window with the right knob. 
Right, so now I'm sort of jamming with history here. Scrolling across the window. Making it smaller if I want. Or larger. Really, really nice. So, you can see why zones and... Yeah, and this is a synth is one of the most interesting things going on in Mimeophone. Let's talk about pros and cons. On the cons side, while Mimeophone has unique features that other delays don't, what you might expect to see that doesn't exist here, but does in other delay modules or effects, is a send and return feature to apply other effects into the feedback loop. I guess that would require two sends and two returns because it's a stereo module and would complicate things. That said, since there are two delay lines here, just for fun, you could hack your way around a send and return by plugging one of the outputs into the other input through an effect. You could then use filter and reverb as part of that loop. It would be mono and again, not exactly a send and return, but if you like how it sounds, then it's something. One feature I'd like to see is an option to clear out the buffer with a single key press. If you wanna make sure the entire 42 second buffer is clear now, you need to set repeats all the way counterclockwise and wait up to 42 seconds, otherwise you may travel back in time to places you don't want to visit. Finally, I'm not a big fan of using colors to indicate which zone you're in. I think it would have been nice to either have these LEDs fill up or have a number on board and also have a cheat sheet for the different delay times, meaning the different maximum and minimum sizes per zones, though you can sort of get a feel for that with the rate LED blinking here, right? So in short zones, it's just constantly on and as you go through the zones, it blinks slower and slower according to the rate, of course, as well. So you can sort of get an idea for what's going on in each zone. Now, all that said, on the pros side, Mimeophone has quite a few innovations going for it. Even if just looked at as a stereo delay module, the color, halo, and skew features, along with the clock rate, synced, and zone swapping, give it stereo powers that will liven up any mono audio. All that would have been nice on its own, but the built-in feedback-based synth and multi-zone layering options, or time travel options, take Mimeophone well beyond the realm of just a stereo effect, turning it into a full-blown, standalone instrument. So that's it for Mimeophone. Another thing you might find quite unique is my book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks, available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Aside from that, feel free to ask me any question in the comment section below. Hit like if this video was useful, and if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one, click the notification bell after hitting subscribe. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you in the next one.